Oh, we've got another rhythm. We've got a bit of a rhythm. Yeah. yeah. How, it does get easier. How many is this now? This will be 72. Blimey. You are number 72. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> I know. 72. I know. <laughs> it's actually a bit mad. Like, when you think about it, like 72. Yeah. On, and I think av the average is rare that we go into the three hour mark. We often go into an hour and 45. Okay. So like it's 140 hours, excluding traffic, excluding travel, traffic, and pre and post of just talking to people. And you're like, yeah. this is my job. <laughs> yeah. It's wild. Yeah. It's so good. Do you, do you hope you, obviously you're putting them on YouTube that you'll get monetized for it? We are, we, we are monetized at yeah. the minute. Yeah. Only um, so it can allow us to do more travel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? yeah. We've not turned the monetization on because I would rather more people listened to it. So we use our YouTube numbers and sell advertising for the book and sell advertising for the podcast rather than YouTube's own ads. Right, okay. Because I find them quite obtrusive. But like until I get to a point where... So we've got a few short form episodes that we're going to do, mm. like less podcasting, more like doing. Like when it's a three or four minute episode, I'll put an ad on that. I, right, I, okay. I get annoyed by podcast ads, so yeah. I don't want to annoy people. I'd rather get more subscribers first. When we get to maybe like 10, 20,000, I'll turn the ads on. It, yeah. But for the small amount that it would be, is yeah. it really worth it right now? I do YouTube videos. I've not done them for seven months, but I've been monetized um, and I've been paid. Yeah, <laughs> I've got 120 pounds for, for the last 10 months. Yeah, but, but there, there's so much work. Yeah, there's a lot. And I've kind of stopped. I want to get back into it. That's why I got the new camera. Yeah. Um, but you're in it for the long haul. I think oh, yeah. with YouTube, um, you know, there's a lot of work in it for, for nothing to begin with. Yeah. Um, so. Earth, we got we got enough subscribers and watch hours to be monetized after our fortieth or forty third, forty fourth podcast. Okay. So like that's that's a lot of hours of yeah, content yeah, yeah. to get up there, and even at that, like it's not great YouTube content hmm. because it's people don't really watch a two three hour podcast on YouTube. Yeah. Um, some do. Some do. Some Just... some do absolutely, and I do. I tend to yeah. have on my second screen when I'm working. And that's kind of why I like doing them in people's workshop because it's visual as well. Yeah, yeah. But it's that in itself, it's a job. It's, yeah. a, it's a full-time job. Absolutely. There is a lot more we're going to do in 2024. One of our big concentrations for 2024 is visual. Yeah. Because we've got readership, listenership, and I want watch. Yeah. And then that would be us with the three bases covered. Yeah. So you're going into quite lots of areas to make, to make your income. Well, our... Our whole business model, like our mission statement, is to spotlight and uplift makers around the globe. So the responsibility that comes with that is you need to be in all these different channels. Yeah, yeah. Like we have a social media channel for everything. Like yes, Instagram is by far our best one, but they are still other ones. Yeah. Like that could be ten views one gets, or like TikTok's like two, three hundred views. It's not a lot at all. Right. It only takes one view for you to get more custom. Right. That's absolutely. We just need to be there. Like Twitter's like dead because what we do is not really Twitter conducive at yeah. the minute. Uh, um, uh, LinkedIn's really good, yeah, but like, then LinkedIn's yeah. like totally different. You could get ten views on LinkedIn or ten impressions on LinkedIn versus a thousand on Instagram. Yeah, and the opportunities that come out of ten on LinkedIn, I would say, are much better than yeah. the thousand that come on Instagram. I I find Instagram, especially for artists and crafters, uh, craft people, is the best. Oh yeah. And it's so positive. Um, I get, I'm actually quite overwhelmed that I get so many lovely comments. Yeah. You know, probably 99% are nice comments. You get the odd unpleasant person, you know, that makes something, says something not particularly nice. But um, so the best thing about that? Yeah. It's still engagement. <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't actually matter. <laughs> you, you, I, it is. And. <laughs> I've, By the I have, way, I'm I have, very I'm saying it as a third person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have engaged in it. I'm always polite, but I just, you know, I make yeah. them aware that, you know, whatever they said, it's it, it's not the case. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and rightfully, like I think everyone needs to deal with it in their own way, but the the negative side of of Instagram is definitely there. It's it's a hundred percent there. Yeah. But we just try and look at it as yeah still engagement. Yeah, I suppose it pushes it onto someone else's feed. 
Do you engage with no. negativity? No. Have you ever, or do you just? I mean, stay I, 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 I'm more likely to do it than Jack because right. it annoys me more. I just delete Absolutely, it. Absolutely, yeah. I just delete it. I'm like, we're here to represent I'm more the emotional our people. One. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not, for me, actually, it, it does bug me when someone says something negative, and I and I. And I think about it for, for a few days and it, yeah. it winds me up. It really it does. does. But I, I try not to engage because I think that's what they want. Would they say it to your face? Probably not. No, absolutely. And I tend <laughs> you know? to look at their profile and I think, mm, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That says it all, yeah. really, you know. Yeah. Um, so, but Instagram certainly is, for me, it has been my most engagement from, from yeah. people. And yours has gone really well lately, hasn't it? Absolutely. Probably last seven months, I've made 100,000 followers. Really? Yeah. We should probably introduce who you are first, though. Yeah, we'll, we'll follow this line of conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's put a pin in that yeah. and come back to that, because okay. that's... It's a topic. There's a, there's yeah, a whole yeah, topic yeah, there yeah. about how, yes, it's just a number, but it's reach for a business. Um, yeah, I think... I, me personally, I don't care what people say, followers do count. Absolutely. Um, and they have for me. They've made a massive difference. Uh, and I've seen that in the last, say, six months. Well, that's probably, you know... Uh, well, it's more people know about yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, whether it's mini BMW, you know, the work we do with No Mono here, like, mm. it's more people that know about the brand. Like, the more people that know about the podcast kit we use, yeah. the more people are introduced to it, the more people it's on their mind, the more sales they make, the more productive the company can be, the better products they can keep pushing out. It's, it's really simple economics. Yeah, absolutely. But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who is Oliver? <laughs> I mean, I'm an enthusiastic, uh, bordering on obsessive maker. Uh, and I say that in a general term. Uh, I love learning new skills. I love engineering. I love problem solving. I've done everything from pottery to sculpture to fine woodworking to model engineering, uh, upholstery, arts, you name it. I've done it and everything in between. And that's been my life. Um, and uh, I just love working with my hands and, and and that is me why i know that's a really like broad question but <laughs> why why do you think that working with your hands has been so important to you has it always been there mm. yeah you know i've got obviously my i've got uh, my family like my dad's a potter mm -hmm. my mum worked in the pottery she was decorated my sister's an art teacher so i think it's, it's in, in it's, it's in, blood, in yeah. it's in the genes um I kind of feel like I was just born to do it. Right. Um, you know, I remember my my mother just plonking Lego in front of me yeah. and I would play with it all day, yeah. you know. Um, technical um, Lego for birthdays and Christmas. You know, Lego I, I, that's yeah, the one. Yeah. That's the one. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, I would, I would build it up and then five minutes later I would destroy it yeah. and I would build something else. Gateway drug to engineering though, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know... I, I used to follow some Facebook sites when they, they, they these people would show their, you know, what they've built from the set. And I said, you know, what's the point in just them building it and not dismantling it and yeah. and building something else? Um, so I just, yeah, kind of feel that like I was born to do it and, uh, and, I, and I enjoy it. That's the thing. I enjoy the process. Mm. It's the process for me. Sometimes it's not actually even the, the finished, finished product. Yeah. Um, and I find that when I post my um, videos on Instagram, people are more reacted to um, engage with the process rather than the finished product. Yeah. Um, so they feel engaged from start to finish, really, don't they? they kind of exactly. See and you're becomes. taking them on like yeah. story. You're you're taking them on that journey. Exactly. Um, and that's what I like to do, and I like to share as well. Mm. So it's um, yeah, I'm just uh, born to do it. I think. And I, I've never tired from it either. I've always done it, always done it. Um, so, yeah, yeah. So you've always done it. Have you, you've not always made autonomous. No, mm -mm. no. Although, so Automata started for me in the late 80s. Right. Um, although I've not always done it, 
but I discovered it. Um, my grandmother took me to Covent Garden and they've got a market there. And in the basement of the market, there's a parade of shops mm -hmm. and there's one shop in the corner that was called the Cabaret Mechanical Theatre. Okay. And it was part shop, part exhibition. And I remember going in there and you buy your ticket and there was this machine and it would, it would come down and he would stamp your ticket yeah. and then you would you would go in and it was I was instantly hooked it was all a uh, modern contemporary automata they're all behind kind of like glass case right and you used to be able to press the button and you could watch them perform and what I liked about it the most was that you could see the workings you mm. could see how it worked you know this is a complete glass box so you could go around and see how it was working and um i remember coming out of that shop and wanting to go home and build one which i did i built a magician so that my magicians that i built are like 30 years old as in like the idea yeah right um, okay the one that you showed us yeah the one yeah that's just above and behind that's, you. Yeah. that's probably like mark six in terms of ones that i've built right you know, most of them before that have all failed um i remember building it out of balsa wood it worked, and I remember my dad's dog eating it, and I was really oh, upset. No. Um, so that was my discovery of Automata. And actually, the Cabaret Mechanical Theatre, for a lot of makers, is the mecca of uh, modern Automata. Right. If you ask a lot of the makers and the collectors, that's where they discovered Automata. Um, it really pushed it out to, to the masses. There? No, it's not. They're was online for a long period of time they had no permanent base but now they're in the south of england somewhere um and they don't have a massive following but they've got a huge community mm. i remember them they they went to raise some money to get themselves a base right and within a couple of weeks they raised wow. literally like twenty thousand pounds i don't know the exact number but it was it was, it was a lot of, yeah and even i i mean i donated I brought a, a little badge from them, um, you know, to help them because you know if it wasn't for them, I probably wouldn't have discovered them. Do you think that's why you donated? And do you think that's why everyone else donated? Because yes, because they were the they were the the yeah. pages being yeah. opened to a tournament. And, and all the people I follow um, were all showing their their support. You know, yeah, I brought the cool. badge and, yeah. and things like that. So they they're, they're very important in in our community. They really put it out there. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a shame it's it's not there anymore. I do remember when I was old enough, I used to go to Covent Garden just to go round to the um, to uh, Cabaret Mechanical Theatre just to study all the pieces there. Must have must have been there about five or six times. Mm -hmm. Never And then boring. I went there once, and it it was gone, and I was I was so disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> but they're, they're say they're online, and they have they still have that exhibition, and it it travels the world. Oh, cool! So, so um, it's turned into a travelling thing. Yeah, and you know a lot of the artists that uh, had their pieces there, you know, um, I look up to, and my style probably reflects those people as well. That's really cool. Um, sadly, a lot of them aren't with us anymore, but um, some of them are still making, you know. Um, you say there some of them aren't with us anymore. Like a lot of and a, a lot of our concentration, and we are makers, is to ensure a lot of these crafts don't die because mm. it only takes one generation. You can read about it in a book all you want, but Absolutely, you yeah. need hands on yeah. to learn it. And in reality, you need someone to say mm. it feels like this. You can't describe in a book how it feels yeah, to yeah. do something. So, with a lot of that the work that you'd seen and people dying off or not doing it, is there a resurgence in Autonoma? Is there, we're seeing a fair yeah, bit of it at the minute. We've just done an interview for someone that released in edition nine. We had someone in edition four or five. I've, I know, I it's a lady, Frankie isn't lady. it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I follow her, some amazing stuff. Lovely stuff. Yeah. Um, it has, and in fact, I get so many messages about how do I go about learning this stuff there's no well i always point them to the cabaret mechanical theater yeah. they've got a great website um and you know I've, I've had people email me saying can i be your intern for a for a few weeks you know i'm i'm from uh, abroad somewhere do you do you mind if you have <laughs> yeah if you have me and i'm 
Like, I, I'll be honest, I'm not a team player. Um, uh, and I'm just at the beginning of my journey. So I feel actually that I'm not experienced enough yet to, to teach, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. You're still learning yourself. Yeah, exactly. You? Yeah, yeah. The backside of that is there is someone that's between zero and where you are that you can still teach. You might not be able yeah, to teach yeah, someone yeah, yeah. where you think you want to be, but you between zero and where you are, you can still teach. Um, yeah, I, I still feel, though, that I've got a lot to learn mm. and I really want to be at the, at the peak of my career before I start. Do your to, learning first. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and I try and share as much as my, of my uh, work as I can, you know, again, on, on Instagram and, and YouTube. And I think that's important, you know, yeah. to share. Um, but it has, yeah, it's had a real, it's been very popular, mm. you know, um, and and good as well because it's it's quite a niche, a niche it's craft. Very niche. Mm. Yeah, yeah, very niche. Do you think a lot of the the attraction in the autonomy and certainly the way you do your autonomy is from what you've seen when you were younger? You know, it's open. You can see the gears. You can yeah. see everything turning. It's not just. Yeah. So if you if you look at the the you know back in the eighteenth nineteenth century, you know, you know, that kind of automata, you know, a lot of that was hidden. Mm -hmm. And a lot of their stuff was trade secrets they didn't want to show yeah, people, yeah. you know. Um, but now it's it's a, it's about putting it on display. You know, what I build is very typical to what the other builders um, um, develop as well, you know, having it on all on show. For me, that's important because, you know, I remember as a kid, I was taking things apart to see how they, they work. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's that's really you know important to see that how they work. So it's fifty fifty for me. Yeah. It's the story on top, and it's it's the um, the operation below. You know, seeing yeah. how it works. So that is very important. Very clever. That's the bit that fast. I think we are very individual in that that aspect. Like I think Kate would very much look at. Top, and it's probably why this works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She'd look at the top down. She's like, oh, he's going to take his hat off, and I'm like. <laughs> That bit turns, that's why he's yeah, taking his yeah, hat off. Yeah, you know, I yeah, think there's, yeah. there's something really nice about Autonoma that mm. makes both of that available mm -hmm. to, uh, absolutely, to anybody. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And they're two separate, you know, when I create them, they're two separate stages. You know, yeah. I, I'll, I'll start with the, the sculpture on top um, and then I'll design the, the mechanics at the bottom. So it's kind of two separate parts to it. So does, what comes first in your design process? The story what it's going to look like the movement or the mech yeah. like do you ever just be like so, i really want to try this cool mech and i'll work the rest out so far do you know what the hardest part is is the idea mm -hmm. is coming up with a really good idea that will transfer mechanically because mm. not all the ideas will will work very well um so for me i'll come up with an idea i'll do a quick sketch of a layout um and then I'll just start making, you know. And I do often get the comment and say, no, how do you design these? I say, I don't. I just make it up as I go along. Yeah. I can do that now. I've, I've had all the experience mm. to be able to do this. Um, so I'll, I'll play around with the, um, with the sculpture, get all the, the, the movements going and the joints. And then I'll sit on computer and I'll design all the, the mechanics so I can lay out all the geometry. Um, I use uh, CAD. Yeah. Um, which I love uh, to use um, and I can generate all the gears for it and I can generally design it and then build all the the parts and it will it kind of works you know there's always a few little niggles yeah, that you yeah. have to sort out and then I'll strip it all apart and then I'll decorate it and that's pretty much the process to it so far, um, it seems to be working. Yeah. <laughs> it's just amazing to have something on the screen and then making it, you know, having the full process, being able to do the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, and it's, all in the shop. Yeah. Yes, yeah. It's, you know, that's the best part is having the idea. Yeah. The best is when you, have a, when you have that idea and it instantly comes to you and you don't have to think about it too much. Sometimes I like to ponder on the idea for two weeks. Mm -hmm. It instantly comes to you. That's the best. That's the best part, and then yeah. you can just get straight on it making. Yeah. That's my favourite part. The making bit. Yeah, the making. Really bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Um, 
and to do it seven days a week is a dream. Yeah. yeah. You know, oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So Did that's really tired? the process. Um, Frustrated one thing. Tired no, is different. I do, you know, <laughs> if I could work 24 hours, I would. But it gets to a point where you start, you know, later on in the evening, you start to make mistakes and they can cause problems. So, yeah. you know, come a certain time, I'll stop, tools down, you know, get back up in the morning, fresh head on you. Um, so, you know, there's, there are so many things to think about when you're building them, um, especially if I'm building a limited edition of something, you know, you're building, say, 10, 20, 30, you know, they've all got to work. Mm -hmm. I've got to send them off to wherever I'm sending them. And and they've got to... Uh, uh, so I designed them to... They're probably never going to be played more than two hours in their life, you know. Right. But I want them maybe in 20 years' time, someone can take it off the shelf and it will still work. Mm -hmm. um, I have got a couple of pieces in um, the Mad Museum, which is... Mm -hmm. The mecha um I've got it to stand for now. But they're in, they're in Stratford upon Avon, and again, it's a bit like the Cabaret Mechanical Theatre. People can go around and press all the buttons, and so I donated Mad Museum. A -A yes, M A D stands for something I've forgotten. I've um, heard of it before. But um, again, a bit like the Cabaret Mechanical Theatre, you can go around pressing the buttons. So I thought I donated them, and I thought this will be a test because they'll be being used seven days a week and I donated a, a running man and a, a, one of my toothbrush the men. Man so the running man there yep. and the toothbrush man. Now the toothbrush man's quite complex. Mm -hmm. So I, I, that lasted six months before it got sent back to me for, for repair. Uh -huh. The running man lasted a year. Wow. So I was actually it's pleasantly really surprised, test. you know, um, and I, I, I actually drove down there to to give them to the to the place and um, the guy that maintains it. I feel so sorry for him because all the pieces they have are not designed to be used for that amount of time. You see, so he's constantly going round maintaining these things. So it just must be it's a full time job for him. Yeah, yeah, you know? I can imagine. So um, yeah, yeah, that's because uh, they're a very delicate thing. Like to do the they are, movement. They they are. This is again, this is things that I have to think about. Um and and the hardest part for me is giving it to the, the delivery driver. I was just about to say packaging. Packaging. Um yeah. so far I've I've had one issue, it got sent to Switzerland and it it, it didn't work. Um, the gentleman was lovely. I gave him a video. I said, listen, I can show you how to fix that. And, and he fixed it. Oh, so, cool. um, so I've sent out 60 odd pieces and I've not had any problems. Touch. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. Right. Um, so, but I have that in mind when I'm designing them, you know, they have to be robust, um, for that travel. Uh, mm. cause I can imagine some of these things are probably thrown about. You just don't know. Yeah. Um, so that's that's an important part of, of the design, you know, making sure they are robust. How do you ship them? Um, in a box. <laughs> um, so what I've, I'll buy a purpose-made box that they'll fit into. Mm -hmm. um, anything I think is going to rattle, I will secure loads of tissue paper in there, and then it goes inside another box with. Um, Obviously, safety packaging as yeah. well. Uh, so far, it's I've had no problems with it. I know some people who really go um, to full extents, you yeah. know, so they're really well packaged. I have with the more expensive pieces made a wooden box to create for them. Yeah, um, we partner with a company, Ebus, Ebus Shipping, and that's what they do. They design specific boxes okay. for people that yeah, ship. Yeah, yeah. I'll introduce you. I'll uh, I'll try yeah. and remember to do an email. Okay, but they specific like for people that do glass or mm. stone or I mean, this would be the perfect thing. Yeah, and they've, yeah. She sent me a picture. They, like, suspended this yeah. thing in a box and sent it to Korea for an exhibition. Like, it was, like, proper, like, Batman Dark Knight yeah, nuclear yeah, reactor yeah, suspended yeah. in a container <laughs> kind of thing. It was wow. really cool. Then that, That's exactly what they do. Yeah. I'll need to remember and introduce you. Because you're right, it's 
it's not just making it. It doesn't need to work here. It needs to go insert mileage here to there. And how it's many hours have you worked on that for yeah. it not to work when it's get there? It's it, 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 exactly. Now, and I have to think about that the country it's going to, you know, the, it could be high humidity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, where, yeah. where is it going to be stored? Um, so I do pay particular attention to the timber that I use. Yeah. Um, so there's, yeah, there's lots of things to think about. You know, if I buy the timber in, I'll leave it for, for three months before I even touch it. Okay. You know, so it becomes... That's the flooring contractor coming out and yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> let everything acclimatise yeah, 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 yeah. before you it, fit it. Ab absolutely. Yep. You know, it causes, otherwise it will cause you problems. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as long as you're well prepared, um, you know, it's it's not a problem. So, so far I've, I've been, you know, okay with it. Uh, the only thing that I... <laughs> I remember my very first piece that I sold, I sent it out to America and it got stuck in customs for two weeks. And I made the mistake of saying, um, writing on the um, commercial invoice, wooden mechanical sculpture. And I think it must have just freaked them yeah. out. And I remember the guy contacting me and said, I've got all these forms to fill out. He said, and also I need to know all the timber that you've used in, in the piece that you Whoa. sent over. Some of it was mahogany, which um, it was, uh, I salvaged. Right. You know, and I was looking at mahogany and it's, you know, you're not meant to send that stuff over. Yeah. So then there's me just absolutely panicking. This is 11 o'clock at night, trying to think of all the timbers that I've been using in this piece. Without the piece in front of you? Yeah, and right. not just that, I had to find the Latin names for them, the, the exact amount of timber I was using, where they'd been sourced from. Oh, my goodness. And I've wow. just, my first, this is my first um, piece going abroad, and I just It's amazing absolutely... the things you learn, though, right? Because for next time... Do you know, it's... it's... Don't say wooden. <laughs> yeah. I don't, yeah. and I've had no... And, and I've, I don't even say that. I just say automata. Don't even mention that it's that it's timber. Perfect. And you know, I've sent them to China, South Korea, Australia, Switzerland, Germany, um, America's my biggest market. Um, you know, here in the UK as well. But I just say all summer to now, and so far I've had <laughs> I've had no problems. Here's a perfect insight into all the other things that you have to do as a maker. Yeah. It's those, Packaging, it's, yeah, yeah. forms. <laughs> it's, it's little things like that you don't realise. Mm -hmm. Even like, um, like payment system as well. Yep. Um, you know, I think and I, I use PayPal because it, it, it's great for, for international payments. Yeah. You know, I know they take their little bit of percentage on top. I would pay it every day. Exactly. Um, you know, that's, that's another thing. It's like having a website and... You know, for people to, I wanted someone to just click a button and I would send it out. People have to email me and request it. Uh, it's, that, it's something I was talking to uh, my wife about. And um, as I said, I've always wanted, but I just press the button and I send it out. I don't have to communicate with them. But actually, what I've found is when people email me, you have a little bit of a rapport with your customer. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And I've said to my wife, I said, do you know what? I'm not going to do that. I think I'm, I'm still going to get them to email me and request because yeah. then you get to know your customer and they always say to me oh i've seen your uh, work on instagram um i'd like to request one of your pieces or i've seen your youtube video um or i've seen you uh your articles in the automata magazine uh, i'd like to request a piece so it works you know putting yourself out there it, it works and when you get that feedback it's 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 really positive yeah you know I absolutely agree with that. It's one of the things that, because mm -hmm. we're a community-based company, mm. like we're, we're on a mission and that mission requires and is here for a community. It's one thing we always try and do is be personable and answer DMs because our, our website very much is. Yeah. The only thing you can really buy from us is advertising or a magazine. Yeah, You're either a B2B buying advertising, which we do have a good customer rapport, or you're buying a magazine, which is a one-click item. Yeah. And we struggle to do the opposite of what you're doing. Like we, we have to put a lot of concentration into building customer rapport, yeah. into letting people know that we are people. Yeah. I think I think having customer rapport is so important. Yeah. It is, but I've what I've noticed now is having a large audience, you get so many messages, <laughs> so many inquiries. How do you cope with it? Um <laughs> I <laughs> Like Instagram, you have to filter 
you have to filter it out. Some of the comments I, I have to, I can't answer. I just physically don't have enough time. You get time. no work done. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. I have to spend sometimes a day a week just going through it all. I really do try and answer because people generally are curious or they want help. And I do want to try and help. Some of the questions they're asking, you know, it takes quite a, a paragraph just to, to answer yeah. them. You know, and sometimes I just haven't got that time. So I, I really do feel bad. I do try and engage with as many people as I can, but sometimes it's just not possible, yeah. you know. And I've come from, before I I started making all this, I would never send anybody an email. I would never make any comments on social media. You know, I'm, I've actually um, discovered when I, when I went back to college, I'm dyslexic. Right, okay. You know, um, and that's probably one of the reasons I don't particularly like writing. Yeah. Um, having said that, uh, I write for <laughs> the, the Automata magazine. Yeah. You know? It's a bit different when you're super passionate about it, though, isn't it? It is, um, absolutely. Uh, it's it's hard, but I enjoy it, yeah. you know. And again, it's putting yourself out there, um, which I knew was important, you know. To begin with, I was doing that for free. Um, so I should uh, just say that when I first started, I submitted an article. We have a little community um, a magazine called the Old Summer Magazine. And um, I submitted an article. And um, about a year later, uh, the editor got back to me. He said, you know, one of our uh, writers is leaving. Would you like to have your own column? Like oh, cool. regular column. I had to think about it for a few days. I'm like, this is going to be hard work. And he, he did say to me, it's for free. You yeah. know, he said, you can write about what you like, as long as it's to do with automata. Um, so I thought, yeah, do you know what? I'll, I'll do it because it's, I'm just saying yes to everything. Mm -hmm. It gets my it's name great out. Great outbound PR. Yeah. Absolutely. I tell you what, and I've had so many opportunities from that nice. as well. So I've been doing it for the, for the last year. It's like... Um, comes out every two months. You know, I have to write a thousand words or 1500 words. I have to say though, my best buy in the last four years is a software called uh, Grammarly. I use it. Do you use that? Oh, Kate great. makes me use it for everything. Yeah, Almost I do. to the point if I'm texting someone back, yeah. Kate's like, <laughs> get on Grammarly. My grammar is terrible. Phone. I do it for everything. My, my, my grammar yeah. is terrible. And actually, since using it, mm. My grammar's become a lot better. Yeah, you yeah. you learn from it. Yep. Yeah, you know, you do. Um, and I absolutely love it. It's not, no, because someone said to me, "Oh, that's that's AI." I said, "No, you have to do the hard work. It's it just AI. helps you Edgy, explain it slightly yeah. better." Because yeah. I love the magic button when you, you you kind you've written a sentence, you're like, doesn't quite make sense, or I know I could write that better, yeah. and it obviously it does it for yeah. you, um, and that's the best buy I've ever done in the, the, the last four years and it's taken me from when I was writing the articles it might take me three or four days it takes me one and a half days now you know it yeah. saves so much time I don't buy you? the <laughs> I don't buy the negativity towards oh it's AI kind of thing because it's like it's like CAD it's like a hammer on a toolbox it's just another tool, tool. to get the job exactly. done yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. no different from a screwdriver yeah. it's just on yeah. a screen Exactly. It's not like you're saying, write me an article. I, You've written the article. You're just. I've got an autonomous magazine yeah, article yeah, yeah, to write. Yeah, yeah. Here's my last one. Write yeah. a new one. <laughs> yeah. It's not that. It's not that. You have to put the hard work in. It just makes it um, readable. Yeah. Especially from my point of view. Yeah. It's really nice to. So, we're launching a new website. Um, probably the week this podcast goes out in two weeks and we've been inviting a lot of makers to write about their experiences so other younger up and coming or mature makers can learn from that yeah. and it's really good to know that you've got so much out of that because it is outbound PR mm. like we exist as an, an outbound well, PR sometimes company. you just want a platform to just have an opinion or give yeah. some yeah. advice and you know somewhere that someone else is going to get a benefit from it you know absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. have you how have you found that for like your headspace, because I've got a million ideas flying around all the time. Mm. And when I sit down and write something like cohesively mm. and in a concise way, or I try and make it concise, people will be listening to this and be like, nothing's concise. Mm -hmm. um, how have you found that for like your headspace and your thinking? Writing, you mean? Yeah. 
or maybe not so much writing, but any form of communication that's about your craft. Because it's so easy to just go down that rabbit hole, and autonomous is definitely one of those rabbit holes you can go down. Yeah. Like, there's always something to think about. Yes. Um, I guess it's based on topics. I don't know if they give you a topic or is it just like... No, well, I, I try and do something. You know, if, if I've discovered something, I like to share it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I'm quite technical when I write, so I like to... Uh, more about the engineering. Yeah. So if I've discovered a, a new way of um, doing a joint or a mechanism, I'll talk about it and I'll go nice. in depth and I'll explain how I've done it. Um, um, or if I'm like writing for the, the magazine, if I'm on a project, I'll talk about my whole process, you know, as much as I can. I remember the first time I, I when I was had my, my column, um, <laughs> this massive article on, on, on the, the love story, yeah, automaton, and um. I remember the editor come back, he said, that's really long, you know, I said, I, I, I can't shorten it anymore, but he managed to, 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 to fit it all in, he said, probably do it in parts next time, so ah, cool. I, I've been doing that, so um, my next article is the last part of, I did a piano player, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and um, so I just did that in three parts, and I, and I just broke down how I did everything, and I went into quite a bit of detail about it. No, I think people like that. They like, oh, yeah. they like yeah. the process. Yeah. I love reading detailed technical mm. articles. Like, the engineer in me is just so excited reading detail. And, yeah. then, and then when they're, when they're missing a detail out, and you know it's because of a mm. word count or something, I'm getting like, where's the good bit? Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's really, I say, it's really hard as well to go into, to know the technical terms as well, because mm -hmm. I'm terrible at it. Um, I'm sure I call things that they shouldn't be called. So... I, it's 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 a real challenge, but I know I need to do it. I, I like to share. Communication's hard. Yeah, like yeah. good communication, especially in a technical aspect, is very hard. And I'm I'm very much an introvert, and I'm very unassuming. So, you know, I keep my thoughts to myself. So, yeah. trying to get them out there can be it can be difficult. But I know I want to do it because th there is interest in it. And I say I like to share if I can. Yeah. <laughs> Is many other people in the autonomous community like that? Is it a very sharing community? Yes. Uh, and I tell you, um, when I first started and I went onto Instagram, I started making like new friends, people that are on the same journey as me, making automata. Um, and a lot of us were talking individually and we discovered this and we said, listen, let's get a group together. So we formed a WhatsApp group. Oh, I love this, man. So I we call this. ourselves uh, the Automata Collective. So I nice. say, hello, folk. <laughs> all right, yeah. guys, there's about seven or eight of us. And, Introduce um, us to all of them. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're I They're either uh, full-time makers. Cool. And they're all in the same. They've kind of only just started it. So we're all kind of on that same journey. Part-time uh, or real enthusiasts you know, uh, of Automata. And we've been going for two years and it's an active group. Mm -hmm. So we're all in our workshops. We're all talking to each other, sharing our experiences, you know, and it can be lonely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Doing this on your own can be lonely. And we did it quite early on. So, you know, if someone's got a problem or struggling with something, we're all in there. We're, we're helping them. That's cool, man. You know, um, and some of them become really like good friends. We've never met each other. Oh, you but should. My yeah, we. Well, I imagine we'll probably do that one day. But you know, a couple of them we FaceTime each other now. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and uh, you know we're we're, we're finding each other. It's it's hilarious. and all we talk about is you know engineering and, yeah. and automata. That's so it's cool. The, yeah, that is so cool. Um, and it's been a real benefit to, to to all of us. You know, because you're all learning. Like it's habit stacking. You're just stacking knowledge on top of each other. On top exactly. Of, and it's not just, you can only produce so many, auto especially something like autonomous, mm. so time consuming. Exactly. You can only do, you might have a million ideas. You're never going to get through a hundred ideas in yeah. your lifetime. There's so many of them. Yeah. But everyone jumping in, it's perfect. E exactly. You know, and some of us are more experienced than others. So, you know, we can help the less experienced. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but it's yeah, it's been it's been great. It That's really what it's has. About, isn't it? Do you ever find as well that sometimes it's the people without the experience that come out with just a cracking idea? Because they don't yeah. have the experience, they don't have any of the sort of limited mindset that does creep in subconsciously. Yeah, they're just like, oh, I'm going to try it this way. You're like, oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what? Some it's 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 funny because some of us do that. We, I'm going to try it this way, and you kind of know it's not going to work, but we say, do it anyway. Yeah. You need to you need to try it, even if you that inkling that you know it's not going to work. You have to do it. And I'm the same. I know some. I'll try something, and I think this is not going to work. I've got to try it. Yeah. 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 You know, so. It's just me. But it may not yeah, it work. might. Yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll learn something from it, you know. Yeah. That's good. Um, failure is important. Nice. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I've been going down this rabbit hole on failure for about six or eight weeks because I'm the same as you. Like, yeah. the engineering projects i done, I failed loads in the first two years of being an engineer mm. and then was exponentially better year on year after that because like failure seems a negative thing right and and it sucks at the time it sucks yeah. at the time but, but failure learning from failure and if you've got a group where you're learning from everyone's failure yeah that was going to be my my end <laughs> <laughs> question. i knew it was coming but we'll talk about it because for me i didn't realize about failure until i was in my mid-30s right you know um i always remember someone coming up to me saying and I was in my my 20s what is it you do I love making I love making what have you got to show at that point I said I've got nothing to show you and I realized because I fail at everything but I pick myself up and I try again mm. um, and you're right this is something that's not spoken about and needs to be it's not it's okay to fail. You must fail. Yes. That yes. is important. You must fail. And you need to fail. That is so important. Mm -hmm. And um, for the good part of my, my early life, I failed at everything. I had nothing to show, you know. It's only now that I'm benefiting from it. You know, I know thousands of ways how not to do something. And that's that's the important thing, you know. Yeah. And I, I drum this into my kids, but I'm sure it goes through one ear and out the other. <laughs> I'm sure it doesn't. But, um, <laughs> my dad used to say say about me. Yeah. And it does. Yeah. <laughs> but it's that's that's so important, failure. Um, so I embrace it. I mean, even if you think it's gonna not gonna work, just give it a go anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. You do, you put yourself <laughs> off I'm, I'm doing things, it. don't yeah. you? Yeah. Because yeah. you think I'm gonna fail that, but you might not. Yeah. And if you do, you learn something from it. Exactly. Um, and that's it. It's the process, isn't it? It's the process of learning, whether you well, do it or not. To be really frank about it, if your furniture business never failed, mm -hmm. would we be sat here? Absolutely not. Yeah. Like, if it wasn't for that failing, we would never have come up with a mission statement to share maker stories, because that's the struggle you were having at the yeah. time. Yeah. We'd have never been sat here. Yeah. But now, if I'd taken everything that I learned, I've learned to this point, and taken it back, like it, it would have been a lot more successful. But yeah, you know, you just but you don't know that. You don't know that. Failures, so exactly. right? Yeah. 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 You're so more experienced from from that. You yeah. know. Um, but yeah, yeah. Probably. <laughs> <Good laughs> I love topic. it. Yeah. I'm so here for it. Yeah. I am honestly feel like failure is like my my big topic at the minute. I yeah. Just everyone talks about the positives, but like. You know, the negatives or the failures. Yeah. Still need to talk about it. Yeah, I've been talking about it for maybe six months. I'm desperate to just like round up a bunch of makers and just start like a fuck it fright the fucked it Friday yeah. article. Like, what did you make a mess of this week? Yeah. Let's talk about it. Like let's glorify it. That's a brilliant idea, you know. And they need to teach that more in schools as well. Something that no one ever told me. Yeah. It's okay to fail. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know? Um because you're expected to pass or exactly you know to... and i didn't do very well at school yeah. at all um so um yeah if i could tell my my younger self that i yeah, would yeah. say do you know what you you're right just keep failing keep going but just the important thing is if you fail you get back up and you try again that's mm. that's the important thing you know yeah, yeah. so i want to go back to i want to come back to that yeah. but i want to go back to the community thing first before we come off the community thing mm. An in-person meetup. 
So we spoke to Rachel E. Miller and um, sign, sign Hannah yeah. Lindsay, the sign painters. And a few years back, they done what was called what they called Birds of the Brush. Oh, right. Okay. So they're Glaswegian, so it was yeah, Birds, yeah. B-U-R-D-S, yeah, yeah, yeah. which I, I'm <laughs> so here for. And they basically just got a bunch of female sign painters, because female sign painters are pretty mm. unrepresented. Yeah. Um, got a bunch of female sign painters together and just got together and like painted and had a bunch of drinks and food and and then one of the sign painters that was there who lives in Copenhagen Copenhagen done one out there so like it didn't just become them organising it every year the community so they done it one year wow and then someone else kind of picked it up so I was trying to encourage them and and I I hope it I, I say I was encouraging them I think they would have had the idea themselves regardless yeah but you're just like you need to do it you need to Aye. go on yeah. so like, because there's a community you could organise it this year someone else yeah. picks up the brush next year it allows Absolutely. you to someone like else... travel yeah. and see yeah. everybody else's like ways of living or you know crafts yeah. in that area it's yeah. a good way to do it because think how much you've learned from a text group yeah. how much would you learn if it was in person right absolutely Absolutely. I think it's a brilliant idea yeah you know yeah, <laughs> uh, do, it, do it. I'm here for it. We'll come and cover it. Okay. We want to do the press back on it. The, um, so to go back to the the failure in school and stuff. Mm. Look, when you came out of school, you never went straight into autonomy. No, I I went into art and design. Right. I mean, th- th- this is the thing. I should have gone straight into an apprenticeship. Right. But I remember when I was at school, everybody was pushed to go to college or university. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't mostly. made for college. Or university. Yeah. Um, I'm uh, I'm hands on. You know, I should have been gaining the experience on the job. Yeah. Um, so I did art and design. I jacked the the, the course in three months before the, it finished. No Never way. used to turn up. To be honest with you, wasn't interested. Um, my my uncle said, oh, "Come and work for me. You can be a floor layer." Okay then. Um, but in my mid. 20s I went back to college and studied mechanical engineering nice. um, and I got my diploma nice. I was going to do an extra year and do the, the degree but just the the writing was too much for me yeah. um, and that's where I discovered I was dyslexic oh, okay and I have to say that the Scottish education system were fantastic mm. so when I went in there I said listen I struggle they paid for a test they paid for me to have one-to-one teaching cool um, with any of the, my written work, they paid for a laptop, nice. um, so that really helped me get through it. Um, although <laughs> I was disappointed because it was pretty all much theory, and I wanted more practical. Yeah, we had one practical lesson, and that was my favourite favourite time of the uh, of the um, of the week. But I did also learn, and I still use today is is uh, CAD, yeah, AutoCAD. So that's been really valuable for me um and i've i've been using that ever since uh although <laughs> i was using i learned on autocad and, and i had uh, someone gave me a copy of it it's really really old and then um <laughs> it got too old <clears throat> and then <laughs> i went to look at prices for these <laughs> these software you know, and a thousand pounds, not not just a thousand, it's a thousand pounds a year, something like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, I cannot afford that kind of price. Um, so I use uh, a free CAD, which is Libra CAD. So oh, yeah. it's, only two, it's only 2D, but it's very similar to mm-hmm. AutoCAD. So it didn't take me too much to, yeah, cool. to, to, to go over. And I actually don't mind designing in 2D. Because I nice. find it easier to, to, to work out all my geometry, yeah. to be honest with you. Um, so, yeah, that's what I kind of took from college. But after I finished, I went straight back to flooring because the money was too good to right. to, to, to not do. Yeah. And, and I think it was also a little bit of a confidence thing. I didn't know where to go when mm. I finished my course. I didn't know what to do. Back of my mind, I always wanted to work in my workshop i wanted to do the whole process from start yeah to finish you know if you if you go into a job you're doing one particular part of engineering i didn't want to do that i wanted to do the whole thing yeah so um 
uh, it, it's yeah, and it was say it's a confidence thing as well. So mm. it, it was easy for me to go back to yeah, to, yeah, to doing the floor. And there's a, there's a sensibility about that. There's, there's yeah, a, a yeah. common like there's a wage that comes every month and exactly. Um, but were you still you were still. I was going to say playing with. You were still developing your autonomy on the side at that time. So I was doing it on and off. Right. My, my problem was that most of my ideas were way beyond my capability. Right. So I would, I would attempt them and then realise I just I wasn't capable of making them. Mm. So I would then go on to something else, something completely different, and then I would revisit it maybe a few years later you know, try my ideas again, not capable, I would leave it. Mm -hmm. um, and then for for a good amount of time, I was doing my house, building my mm -hmm. extension. So I did it all, um, learning all the trades there. And then the pandemic kind of hit. And it was that point um, I made a decision to then start doing it full time. Nice. Right. You know, I think for a lot of people, that pandemic period, um, lockdown, you know, I, I was very fortunate that lockdown, um, I was furloughed and I enjoyed it. <laughs> you know, being a floor layer, I was doing two, three hours um, a journey time, hard days graft, and then another two, three hours coming back home. Mm -hmm. Um you know, I've got family as well. I've not seen much of them. I started to get niggles in my back and my knees. Oh, I can imagine. I've, I've, you know, I've abused my body. I used to work on my own. Right. So lifting heavy equipment all the time on building sites. You know, Highlands of Scotland, cold as well <laughs> on these building sites. Yeah. Not good for the body. No. Um, and I thought it, it's, I need that change. You know, I was in my 40s as well. So it's like, okay, now it's time to to realize your dream now it's time to do it you know never too late to start it's also. never too late and i'd be honest i don't think i would have had the confidence earlier on mm -hmm. um so i just started to develop some ideas you know for the for the next six months because i was self-employed i could kind of maybe do a few days flooring and a couple of days in the workshop cool um so i did that for six months i developed four magicians um, my presence on social media, you know, I had a, maybe a couple of hundred people following me. Um, but I put the magician I made onto a Facebook group. Uh, it's an automata one. They've got quite a few members. I think it's something like 30 or 40,000. Wow. Put it out there. Instantly, someone came back to me. Are you selling it? You know, oh, and really? I, was, I was like, wow. That okay. changes the game, doesn't it? Yeah. And I thought okay, wow, this, this is amazing. Um, you know, because I, <laughs> I thought then I thought, oh, I'm the artist now. <laughs> I can, you know, I can maybe certainly charge for this, which I did, you know, and the guy went for it. And he, it's a, um, a gentleman in America and he's got one of the biggest collection of magic related automata and things like that you know because it was a magician at the time it was first a magician, one. yeah yeah okay. i was saying that, that that magic related automata is a completely other area it's a completely different area you've got big collectors right. um so i sold that and then i sold another one a couple of months later again to america but your confidence level oh absolutely and i just thought wow this is amazing um so then i developed uh a new idea like the the running man mm -hmm. i decided to make 20 of those and at this point i kind you of thought 20 of the running yeah man. it was wow. quite ambitious for me especially because i've definitely to show the camera yeah, <laughs> yeah. so it's, it's this way right yeah yes yeah. yeah especially because actually he i built one of those um about 20 years ago yeah. so it's based on an old idea and uh, so I built 20 of them and they were taking a long time. And that's when I realised, right, I need to maybe spend more time in the workshop. Um, I had enough of work and I was just driving home one day and I thought, nope, that's it. I'm not going back. I cleared all my, well, I could, yeah, kind of. I cleared all my, my, my work and I didn't tell my wife. I was in the workshop for a week 
And she came in and she said to me, are you going back to work? And I just said, nope. Yeah. nope I I'm am not. working. What are you talking about? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. <laughs> <laughs> you said you just in your workshop. I said, no, this, this is work. This yeah. is my work now. Um, I've got 20 running men here. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> building a small army. Yeah, I know. And it, they did take a, a long time. You know, I'm yeah. still I'm still new into it. I'm still developing ideas and ways to, yeah, to manufacture these things. And uh, I still have my work van. So, you know, it was a, the occasion where I had to go back out to work and, you know, to pay them more yeah, <laughs> and course. all that. But And then I learned about the power of celebrity. So this is a, a, a good story. My... My father's a potter, right. so his pottery is just, just oh, over the road yeah. there. And he employed Keith Brimer-Jones of the Pottery Throwdown, you know, the, okay, the, yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 the judge of the TV series. And he still keeps in contact with him. And he, Keith happened to be up in the Highlands and he was visiting my father and I happened to be in the house at the time. And I could hear him talking in the other room and I had my brother-in-law, Neil, who's been a massive help. So shout out to Neil, the design business. Um, he's been so helpful. And he was sitting next to me and he said, Oliver, you need to go in there. You need to go in there and you need to show him what you're doing. And I'm like, oh, no, I can't. I can't do that. He said, no, go in there and show him. He said, he's got a big social media presence. Mm -hmm. He said, you never know the opportunities. So I went in there, spoke to him, and he said to me, um, you know, send me a video and I'll post it on my social media. I thought, great. Yeah. And then a couple of days later, I thought, I can't just send him a magician or a, a running man video. He's a potter. You know, it's not going to work well with his audience. Great thinking. So great it, thinking. Yeah. Instantly, I thought, potter automaton that's what i'm going to build him do you know the insight that you had there is perfect because mm -hmm. so many people think big account dump this on a big account Absolutely it'll just not. work Doesn't it's work. not it's audience specific yeah. Well, well, well yeah we'll talk about that in a minute because that's important um so i needed to give him a good reason mm -hmm. so i spent the next three weeks building him a potter wow. and i remember for those three weeks, I would wake up every morning and I was super excited nice. just to get into the workshop. I mean, literally, I jumped out of bed straight into the workshop, uh, built it in three weeks, sent it down to him. And then a few, di a few days later, my phone just started going ping, 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 ping. You know, having just a few hundred followers, you know, when you get a new follower, it, it lets you know. Plus, we dopamine hit, like. Yeah, great. yeah, yeah. So Even I'm, now, with a number of followers, yeah, it's yeah. a dopamine hit. It's great. Exactly. So I'm opening my phone, and my phone has just gone mental. It's just all these people following me. And then Keith messages me and says, how's your profile doing? And I said, it's doing fantastic. You know, he said, he said, that's the best fit, um, reaction I've had to one of my videos. Wow, really? Yeah. And so, and he... The only thing was, I got so many messages and comments, I got overwhelmed by it all. I couldn't handle it. Right. So this is a time where I'm, I've not sent, hardly ever send emails or make, you know, write comments or anything like that. I had to get my wife to, to go through it all. I couldn't handle it. Um, Scroll from so, the notes, like, drum. yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, you know, wow. at the time I was useless at typing anyway. I was like, it, it would take me 20 minutes just to write a sentence. And that's um, not uncommon, by the way. We spoke yeah, yeah, to yeah. Bryony just before Christmas. Bryony Machen, great mosaic artist, does loads of workshops. She, like, done a TikTok video, just a time lapse, mm. and it just went mad. And she had she shut down her store and everything at the day because yeah. it was she just overwhelming. Like, really? I just I can't cope yeah. with it. I just can't cope with like. It's, it is. Yeah. I was because my wife stepped. She said, "I'll I'll do it for you." And I said, "I, I can't answer all these these comments and yeah. these emails. It's too much." Um, anyway, you know, there was the emails, uh, all inquiries, are you going to build any more of these potters? Where can I get one? So Because they were all potters, right? Exactly. So I made 12 of them, sold the lot. <laughs> nice. you know? And most of them were potters, yeah. you know? Um, so I, don't I thought, know if I've seen that one, actually. It's think. just, he's, he's half, his head's off at the moment. Oh, is it this one? Yeah. <laughs> oh. That's the prototype. I actually made two of them when oh, I was doing amazing. it. That looks amazing. But he's, his head's missing, his arms and all that. <laughs> um, so I thought, 
that's it. I've, 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 I've made it, you know, yeah. this is, this is awesome. So then I decided to sell my van. I thought that's it. Once I sold my van, there's no going Full back. commitment. Full commitment. Not and then, good for you. And then for the next year and a half, I struggled big time. Okay. Really struggled month to month. You know, I was making these things and not selling them. Right. You know, and I couldn't then go back to work and make money. Yeah. So, you know, and I, every month it was, where's my next payment coming from? You know, to pay my mortgage. Mm-hmm. You know, I would, I would sell the odd bit um, um, automata, and it was frightening. Mm-hmm. It was frightening, and I remember the lowest point was. Um, sorry, I was taken on all the opportunities, when any opportunities, and I got quite a few. I was taking them on, um, but really struggling. You know, my my wife has been a massive support. She was taking on extra hours to to try and uh, to to help, and you know, and obviously she was concerned as well that I'm yeah. not bringing in the money. You know, I I come from a really well paid job to not much at all. Yeah. yeah. Um, and some nights I was waking up having panic attacks, right. you know, which I've never experienced before. Um, I think the lowest moment was having a tax bill in my hand and realising I just could not pay it. Yeah. And I left it and I left it. And I remember my wife coming in. I didn't tell her about this either because right. she always worries about money. And... She came in, I had the tax bill in my hand and I just broke down. I was broke down into tears. I said, I can't not do this anymore. I can't do this. I said, I'm working seven days a week, 12, 14 hours a day. And I feel like I'm doing it for nothing, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, I couldn't speak to anybody for the next week. But I said to myself, there is no way I'm being in this position next time, uh, next year. Well. So... I I managed to thank some mum and dad <laughs> in the end, but um, I just said I've got to work harder. Not just making things, but more about the marketing side, getting myself out there, you know, building the the relationship, that you know, building the community. Uh, I remember sitting there just for a whole week in front of the computer trying to understand it all. You know, the, all the, of the other stuff. Yeah, yeah, all the other stuff that. Yeah. You no, know, I said there's two parts of it. There's making, which I find easy. It's my strengths. The other part is marketing, getting yourself out there, which I know nothing about. Mm-hmm. I'm very an unassuming person. I don't like the attention, you know. Um, so I, I was just learning about these things. You know, the, the concept's really easy. You know, it's story, community, keeping yourself um, relevant. You know, consistent, mm-hmm. consistent um, um, name people that you, you're out there, and um, so the concept's easy, but it's, it's the challenging part is implementing it. That's the hardest. It's not the hardest part. It's doesn't happen overnight. You have mm-hmm. to really work at it. Um, what have we been seeing for the past? Even ourselves. It's great. It's mm. just coming out of someone else. Yeah, it just validates yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just I was taking on. Every opportunity, I had to really step outside my comfort zone. Mm-hmm. As you have well. to. That's another important thing as well. You know, if anybody's doing this, just step outside your comfort zone. You have to do it. You know, we're so used to staying in our comfort zone, um, and I had to really step outside. You know, I was, and I had some fabulous opportunities. You know, I had a media company contact me. Do I want to do some TV work? Yeah. So I thought, you know we'll have a little FaceTime meeting and all that. You know, that kind of thing used to make me sweat with fear. Mm. I thought, no, just do it. Never didn't happen. Nothing happened. Because you'd say to yourself, I'm going to work harder. Yeah. Every, every decision pins off of that. Exactly. You did, so Kate and I, for the past six months ago, we probably decided, and we say for a year, like the only mission statement is more people need to know about our mission. Yeah. Improve our reach. So, yeah. Everything goes through that decision path. You know, it's the, Jeff Bezos has got a great story about Amazon for the first, like, X years was, does this improve the customer experience? Yeah. If yes, do it. If no, forget about it. Next project. Yeah, yeah. It's so important to, in my opinion, everyone everyone treats everything differently, of course they do, is to have one point where you've said to yourself, I must work harder hmm. so that 
on all the other things. So everything that comes, you're now like, I don't want to do that media meeting. Yeah. Oh wait, I told myself I must work harder at that, so I must do it. You're showing up for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, it was either that or go back to my old job, which yeah. was. Which you don't have a do you know for. what? To be honest with you, it wasn't an option. I had to make it work. I, there was no other choice. Good for you. It was, you know, full on. I'm going to make this work. Um, um, th- there is no other choice. Um, so I just, yeah, kept working really hard at it. Um, you know, learning about what attracts people, obviously, to, to your story. And mm-hmm. I remember the very first video that really kind of um, went quiet, not say viral, but started pushing my viewers up. And uh, I did a minute video and I explained my story mm-hmm. for the first 40 seconds. Um, you know, how my grandmother took me to Covent Garden, how yeah, I yeah. first encounter of all time at her. And then after that, I just explained who I was and then where you could go. You go to see my website if you see what I've got available. And I did lots of clips of the stuff I'd made. Mm-hmm. And I just put it out there. I did put some advertising on it. I'm going to put about 50 quid on it. But it really did well. You know, and I think it was a really engaging video. So I continued, you know, to try and make them as engaging as possible. Uh-huh. And then from that, I probably mid, probably mid-May, June, you know, it started to take off my social media. And I say, don't care what people say, the more viewers you get, yeah. the more you get out there, the more inquiries. And then... um It started to grow and I got to, I think uh, I had a commission to do before Christmas. Mm -hmm. So I decided to do some videos of the commission. I did a a pianist, I kept saying pianoist on my video. Pianoist. (laughs) And I just, it wasn't until like two days afterwards I picked up on it and people kept pointing it out. It bugged me so much. And and I, I was. (laughs) <laughs> I lost sleep over it. I was almost about to delete the video. It was doing so well, and I felt such a fool. But I thought, no, just just keep at it. Just don't worry about it. There's a wee story in there. Yeah, as I well, know. Right? Yeah, yeah. And I just I don't know why even why I was saying it. I just it just happened. But those videos did really well, and then people I would get lots of requests for my pieces. So over the year and a half, I hadn't hardly sold anything. So I had loads of stock. And then within the next two months, I nearly sold it all. Brilliant. Just from that uh, engagement with people. Um, so the but, following Chris, the following Christmas, this just gone, I've done really well. Great. Really comfortable for me. Um, That's so I, and I'm good. now at the point now where I, I can relax. Mm-hmm. I am comfortable. Um, I get inquiries all the time. I say I have I've quite literally sold all my stock now. Um, so, and how far in are we from the point that you t- you were holding that tax bill? Um, so I was hold. I mean, I that was last, not last Chris, this Christmas. <laughs> no, last yeah. Christmas. It was the Christmas, Christmas before. before. That's when I was holding it, you know. And I'd been holding that for the last three or four months. I've been really you frame it, it now. Been like, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. No, let's coming through. I just. No, I wouldn't even open them. Wow. I wouldn't wow. even open them because I knew what it was. That's a low point. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. when you get in, say, panic attacks and, you know, and my wife just coming in and I just, yeah, breaking down and I was in tears. Yeah. I was in tears because I just, working that amount of time. You know, I had a family as well. I had to, yeah, yeah. yeah. For me, you it's... kids as well, don't you? Yeah, so it's, and it's, it's really difficult because I was dropping them off at school so not having that full time, you have to kind of, when you're going out of the workshop, I have to kind of bring myself down and then you come back and you have to bring yourself up because you have to keep, you know, it's constant thinking about what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So, you, you know, and then you're picking the kids up, going in, making dinners, you know, their homework, you know, trying to spend some time with them. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why I was in here sometimes, you know, eight, nine o'clock at night. Yeah. You know, waking up in the morning, I'd, I'd be in here before they were all, all awake. Um, so that was that was really hard. Although the positive thing was, I saw a lot of my children 
because I was able to have yeah. that little communication with them, yeah, of drop course. them off at school and pick yeah. them up and and whatever. So yeah, it's been a it's been a journey. I'm still not there yet, you know. I'm, so I feel comfortable now, but I've got a long way to go. Still got a long I'm way to go. Sorry that you recognise that. There's something really nice that like you speak to there as well for other other makers and people to hear. You know, you said it was months and months of making stock with nothing happening. Yeah. And then over the course of two months. Yeah. Because, because something was happening. Yeah. Some, yeah, something... It just transactions weren't happening. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Also happening. Yeah, yeah. There's also the, the opportunities I was, you know, taking. Um, you know, through writing for the magazine, I had um, the, the editor, Mark, put my name forward to a film producer. I had a meeting with a film producer. Um, didn't happen, but he said, can you make eight automata uh, in a, in a six weeks? Oh, of course it was six and weeks. I, and, yeah, well, and yeah. I said, yeah, I can do that. He was in, I think he was in Brazil. Logistics didn't work, so I ended up, I think it went to another artist. But, you know, doing those things for free does benefit, mm-hmm. and, I, and I've seen that. Um, and also I got work from uh, a props company contact me. Can you make three automata um, for, uh, for us? Um, we need it by the end of the month. You know, so I said, oh, that's two weeks then. Yeah. Okay, I'll do it. That's such a film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And I said, for the end of the month, you're like, it's the 29th. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fortunately, they, they said to me, um, it's got to be childlike, um, like a Viking medieval style. You don't need to paint it. We just want it bare and we'll do it when, when we receive it. And I said, yeah, go on and I'll do it. I did them in eight days and um, sent them off to them. Don't be like, they were really rough and do ready. Do you feel the pressure? Like, is that something? No, do you know what? Because I'm confident in making. Good. That's that's the one thing that I do have confidence in, is my abilities. Do you that's, think that outweighs all the absolutely. non-confidence you have mm. in the market and putting yourself that's out? That's what keeps You're me so going. so confident here. That's what keeps me going. And, um, you know, I have I have underpriced myself to get bigger works mm-hmm. um, because I know I can do them and I know on my social media... I can really impress, do you know? And I think yeah. that will bring in more um, more followers. Portfolio pieces. Ab- absolutely, it's, it's yeah. better to, and I've done it with design jobs early in my design career, underprice a design job because it meant I had it in my portfolio yeah. rather than charge the right amount and not, and not have yeah. it in my portfolio. Yeah. I know a lot of people say, a lot yeah, because a lot of people say, like, don't underprice yourself. And I'm thinking, no, I, I want to because... I want that job and I want to show people what I'm capable of. Yeah. But price you know? isn't just that. Price isn't just money. Uh, price is the overall yeah. package. Yeah. Do you know, when I was flooring, it was all about the money. Yeah. You know, now it's about the creative, the creativity. Yeah. If I say um, I'll do it in, I'll build something in six weeks and it takes me two months, I don't care. I don't care about that money. Yeah. You know. Getting paid for that creativity. It, it, exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I I want to be comfortable in life, so if I can find other ways of income, mm-hmm. which I want to do, yep. I'm going to do that. But I don't care so much about the money anymore, yeah. you know. As long as you're comfortable, as, long as, I'm, as long as I'm comfortable, yeah. that's the main thing. Um, but I do see other forms of, of of income that I can make. Do you not think a lot of people in the world are try? There's a lot of people in the world that are trying to earn more money to do stuff they enjoy to get away from their nine to five. Rather than just do something you enjoy anyway. Yeah. Like I think yeah. a lot of people that are trying to earn massive paychecks mm. is so they can go on holiday for two weeks a year to somewhere and splash it all. But it's like, yeah. what if you're just really content every day and making stuff? I, on occasions, when I have a moment to myself, I will stand here, even if it's just for 30 seconds, and I have the biggest grin oh. on my face. That's so good. And I'm, And it's like, my God, you're... You're doing this. You're you're actually doing this, and I've always come to the it. Back and it is, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. You have to. And I always know, deep back of my mind, this was something I always wanted to do, mm-hmm. but never knew that I could achieve it. But I am. I am defying the odds. I am doing it. You know, I thought, you know, who's going to want to buy automata? You know, how am I going to make a living from that? You know, can it be done? You know, you, you, you're you starting to doubt yourself. But it just gets to a certain point in your life. You think, you know what? I don't care anymore. Yeah. I'm just going to do it. 
you know. Can it be done? Don't know. I'm going to go find out. Exactly. And it's that thing, you know, being on my deathbed and looking mm-hmm. back and thinking, um, you know, why didn't I go for it? Yeah. Why didn't I do it? But I am. Why do you think that's so important? You mentioned it a couple of times mm. before we started the podcast and maybe once early on. Why do you think that deathbed framing is so important to you? Because we've only got one life, yeah. you know, and I want to live it to the best I can. Not just that, do you know what? I want to be an influence to my kids as well. I want yeah. my kids course, to look back yeah. at me and, and mm. you know, to look at me and think, oh, look what my dad's doing. Maybe I can achieve that, yeah. you know. And, and to other people as well that are following me. I guess so I've had lots of messages, people, I'd love to do what you're doing. And I always try and take the time to say, go for it. Yeah, Absolutely it. go for it. Does do your it. kids come in and... No. No? They're obsessed with iPads, I'm oh, afraid. No. Do you know, no, I have had... <laughs> they're both very artistic. Yeah. And I, um, my son loves to draw. Um, and so does my daughter. Um, I just think they're... Yeah, too much on the on the iPads. One day. Moment. One day, yeah. I yeah. had my son yeah. in here, but he lasts an hour at anything. Mm. He hasn't got the attention span. He's only he's only seven, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, well. yeah he's probably running hundred miles an hour. Yeah, they yeah. appreciate the sort of what it, goes it, into it and kinda but at that age there's just so much else going on, you know. Exactly. Just need to explore exactly, yeah. yeah. Um I know do you know what? I mean I was the same, you yeah. know there was probably a period where I was just on the on the computer for for a long amounts of time, but yeah. you, you soon grow out of it and you find your way, yeah. you know. Yeah, but they know it's here. They know it's yes, here. If, yeah. if the, the day they decide to put the iPad down, yeah. and come here, the iPad or whatever it happens to be at the time, it's here, and yes. there's an ability for them to learn that. Isn't and it? and I'd be more than happy to to, to show them that as well, mm. you know. So hopefully, maybe. <laughs> it must be quite uh we've no kids so i can't speak to it but i can certainly ask the question because if you were like i don't want you on your ipad i want to, i want you to come in here and do this mm. they would almost build a negative i would imagine they'd build a negative experience with it right you have to be a little bit careful yeah, yeah. um and i you know, saying that period when i was a child i was you know we had amstrad uh, computers, you know, I was on it constantly, mm-hmm. but I grew out of it, you know. Um, I'm hoping they'll do the same, but we do encourage them. We don't just let them on it all yeah. the time, yeah, you know, they have a certain period where they can be on it, but we do in- try to encourage them to do other things. But um, kids don't have too much patience, I'm afraid, so mm-hmm. they'll only last a, a few, a little amount of time, you know. Yeah. And as far as crafts go, mm. you need a bit of patience for this yeah. one. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, and that's something I didn't have. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Really? Wow. Okay. Uh, I I kind of seen this like really stoic, <laughs> autonomous like. No, it'll take as long as it takes. <laughs> this was one of my final answers to when you asked the question, "What would you ask yourself?" Yeah. Um, yourself, yeah. And it would be patience. Mm-hmm. I didn't have any patience. I've had to learn that. I don't. If I'd have told myself that when I was younger, I, I wouldn't have listened to myself. Um, I think it's something you have to you have to learn, and it comes with age. That's why half the time I failed because I had no patience. You know, um, I'd want to do everything then, you know, and I, I couldn't wait a couple of days if I had to wait for something. Um, and most of the time, I would try it a certain way that shouldn't have been done that way, and I'd just ruin it, and that was it. You know. Um, and again, with when I was making my automata when I was younger, it was a patience thing. You know, I, just, I soon got fed up of it. So I've had to learn it. I really have. There's still hope for me yet. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's patience. hope for me yet that yeah. I'll find patience. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you have no patience? Absolutely none. No? No, the only thing I have managed to do to manage patience and the stress that comes along with it is fill the time. Okay. With other stuff. Like, like you it can can't, be anything. Yeah, I cannot just, sit still. No. Well, that's the same as me. Yeah. I'm, I can't sit still. So because I love learning so many different things, if it wasn't learning one, I go straight on to, to learning something else if I got impatient with it. Mm. I see that in my kids being really impatient, and um, especially when they want to be perfect as well. Yeah. That's just not going to happen at that kind of age, you know. Um, I'm fortunate now that, 
I've come into this at a high level where I've already got all those um, skills. Mm -hmm. um, although I am still learning, I've I'm, I've been able to to kind of build a product pretty quickly. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, patience. Patience is is something I didn't have. And do you find, because Autonoma would be a really great example of loads of different skills and loads mm. of different things. Like, this isn't working, I'm going to go and do this bit. Like, everything from your Autonoma, from the sculpting to the painting to the mechanical, mm. they're all very defined crafts within yeah. themselves. And that's what I love, love about it. Mm. You're not just doing one craft, you're doing many. It's, it's multi-skilled. Um, and, you know, since... I've been doing I mean, I, uh, some of the um, limited editions where I've made bigger, um, uh, more pieces. I've, I've taught myself how to mould all the pieces. Rather nice. than sculpting them all, nice. I've, I've been moulding them. You know, uh, again, I've been learning to airbrush as well. Yeah, because I've seen that think, on like, all your trees Yeah, and so stuff. It's some, of, some of the, um, you know, painting's all right, but I'm, I want to be perfect. Yeah, I don't get perfect, but that's what I'm striving for. Um, every time I wipe, like every time I make one, I evaluate it, and I'm thinking, okay, where am I dropping behind on one particular skill? Where can I make up mm -hmm. for the next one? You know, where can I try in a new technique for for my next project? Um, so, like a debrief to yourself. After yeah, absolutely. Every I'm, I'm always um, always trying to improve. You know, and I am again still at the beginning, and I I know my potential at the moment is it's not even reached. Nice. Uh, yeah. I, Exciting I, times. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, Good for you. So, I have had. You know, I've got an opportunity this year to make quite a big piece, um, which may take me months, probably until Christmas. Wow. So. Um, that's super exciting at the moment. Nice. So that's really going to push my my skill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you seem excited about it. Yeah. Is it a hard line between striving for perfection, debriefing, and being overly critical of yourself? Because you are a one-man band. I am. Um, it's not so bad now. I think when I was younger, it was harder. Mm. Because now I, I have kind of reached um, that certain level where I'm happy with what I've created, but I know there's a few little things I could do better. Um, where, where I was younger, you know, you would really criticise what you're doing because it's it's not perfect. Um, so I, I'm I am critical, but not too much, not too much. And how come? Is it just a case of looking at the the undeniable stack of evidence before you? Yeah. 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 Just keeping an eye on that. And just, just that. you know, once I think. When I was younger, I wanted to go beyond what I was capable of. Now I understand you can't do that. You need to take a step at a time, um, which, which I'm doing with these pieces. You know, don't dive right into it because you, that's where you, you cause yourself problems. You hate it when you, even just like the social media, like Facebook ads or whatever. It's like, I hate it because I don't know how to do it right this second. Like, I oh, want yeah. to know how to do it right now. <laughs> I want to know how to do it yesterday. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> my, and, and coming from a fast-paced engineering background, I'm like, and without blowing my own trumpet, being very good at that, mm. I'm like, why am I not good at this? Yeah. Yeah. Why am I not good at that? <laughs> yeah. Do you know? Yeah. And, and it's preposterous to think that you'd be good at everything. Yeah. But still think it. And Facebook ads, I've been there a few yeah. <laughs> days and days and days trying to work out it's like, you have and to do we, this, to do this, and to do this. Yeah, so. we had it nailed for a while before they done an update, an iOS 14 update, which was a whole tracking thing. And I was like, I've nailed it. I was like, I'm, yeah. I'm doing it, Kate. We've got it nailed. And then since then, we've paid multiple ad agencies, and now we've just come off it completely because it was just costing more money, and I've never managed to find the time to get back on top of it. And it's time, it's time, it's time. It's a great tool. It's a you phenomenal know, because tool. Because you can target people. Yeah, you can. You know, um, and I've experimented with that. And that, that did help me get off the bar with, you know, getting the more, get more um, followers and, and things Just like getting that, that initial Yeah, step yeah, on. absolutely. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I love to <laughs> where do you want to target something? Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. this street. Yeah, yeah. this street. Yeah, yeah. 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 you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This continent. It's unbelievable. Mm, yeah. 
And it's interesting to hear other people looking at, you're clearly looking at what is just a beautiful craft making, but you're also looking at it as a business, which is what I'm really enjoying about this conversation is mm. the I must work harder that you mentioned earlier was never I must work harder at my autonomy because that's almost a given from speaking to you. But yeah. like you're always going to try and do better there. Yeah. It's all these other things and recognising all these other things. I was very naive to... You know, all I wanted to do was build automata. Yeah. What I didn't realise that you're a business as well, you know? Business um, requires... <clears throat> and I was time. naive to that. And it wasn't until I wasn't selling things, I thought, yeah, okay, I understand it now. I need to, I need to learn about that. Mm -hmm. um, Some people would have given up at that point. Probably, yeah. Most people do. Yeah. And believe, and it's really frustrating when you have to learn all about it. And and it's difficult to do so, especially when you're when I'm, you know, my strengths are learning crafts and arts and all that. But learning the other side to it, which I'm so slow at, is can be extremely flush, frustrating. Yeah, you know, and I'm still learning. But <laughs> yeah, it's, but you're doing the work, like yeah. you oh, yeah. are doing yeah. the learning. Yeah, and you know, one thing if if I could be in every maker's ear and broadcast a message out to all of them. It's, and, a, and a lot, I don't mean this as if I'm some sort of all-knowing oracle, but because there is a lot of them that are doing it very well, mm. is you're a business as well. Like, Absolutely. And for me, it's it's a really passionate topic because without being a business as well, you cannot, the world we live in is a capitalistic society. Mm. You cannot be doing the crafts that you're doing. Exactly. The better the business side, the business financial side is doing, yeah. the more you can do that. Exactly, you know, it, it, it's. I had um, like a, at the beginning. I had some guy offered me to do a craft fair, right? And um, <clears throat> never been keen on craft fairs. Um, I always, I always imagine the people sitting behind them just waiting for a sale. Yeah. You know, because um, I always thought maybe I should go out to my community and do a craft fair. And I'm thinking nobody's got a spare few hundred pound in their pocket. Yeah. It's those kind of craft fairs. It's like a you know, a couple of pound here or there. Um, but, you know, social media is, is the place to do it. It's just so easy. It's on it's on your phone. You and know? the reach is phenomenal. And the reach is phenomenal, yeah. Don't get me wrong, it's nice to see people face to face and have that conversation. Uh, absolutely, but... yeah. <laughs> but I, I would do it for that purpose yeah. only. Yeah. So if I, um, I'm, <laughs> in America, they've got um, uh, some guy set up a, an automata con like oh, cool. comic a convention, con. 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 and it they he does it every two years, and um, I'd love to go out there, but um, I can't afford it at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I'd love to them love to be done here in the UK. You know, we're we're um, in, in the UK. You know, big for doing automa. We've got a lot of artists here that are doing mm -hmm. it. Um, it'd be nice to see that we could we could do something like that here in the UK. Um, It'd be lovely to meet all the uh, all the other people that you see on, you know, on Instagram and all yeah, that. Yeah. And just show your stuff off, you know, have conversation. Do this. Absolutely. Do exactly you know? what we are doing here. Um, you know, you asked me four years ago, do you want to do a podcast? I said absolutely not. I would have, it would have frightened me completely. Yeah. But again, it's just you know when you reached out and said let's do a podcast, I said, yeah, let's do a podcast. Yeah. You know, why not? Yeah. Um, so that's your first um, podcast. Yeah, yeah. Yay. I did. I, I I was offered another podcast, but it was Zoom. And oh, yeah. and when you said we come to you, we come to your workshop. It's very personal, yeah. you know. Um, yes. Because no, you know, I I, I, I follow <laughs> that's you. That's what on, I love about it. <laughs> I follow you on Instagram. I'm following your story as well, and that makes me well, feel like I I know yeah. you. Yeah. I think yeah, come on through. You know, it makes it so much yeah. easier. That's what it's all about. I love doing mm. them in person. Yeah. yeah. Because the Zoom thing's a bit static and it's a bit distant. And yeah. It's... We're seeing that in the car up here, yeah. aren't we? We're just like, nobody else is doing this. No one else is trapped. No one's making the effort. I mean, some people like call us mad. Like, why, yeah, yeah, why are you yeah. doing that? <laughs> I mean, that's not business. That's not a job. But it's My like, well, we're making it our job. job. But, but you've seen a market for it. That's yeah. it. Because you've seen nobody else doing it. You know, but I we have a passion for it because yeah. I know what it's like. We both know what it's, it's like. It's fully mission driven. If yeah. it wasn't yeah. mission driven, we wouldn't still be yeah. here. No, 
Like if, if I wanted to make money, I'd set up a commercial waste business or a local laundry business or yeah, something, yeah. right? Like I, I genuinely, Kate and I genuinely want to make a difference. Yeah. yeah. Like with, you know, saying it's, it's, it can be lonely. Yeah. It can be lonely, especially if you don't know anybody doing what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's, you know, doing a craft, making a living from it. Not many people do that. So trying to find those people bringing them all together it's it's just it's a good thing that you're what you're doing i have to say well, i appreciate well, thank it thank you yeah and we maybe we it. need to bring them all together maybe yeah. we need to resurface the event idea yeah tell us what you need to do i would come to something like that if you made a massive event everybody brings their work through not not about s selling stuff just to get together just to get together yeah. just mm -hmm. to have a chat um you know, for me, it'd be great because it gets me out of the, <laughs> of the workshop. I'm in here constantly, you know. Yeah. Sometimes my, my wife says to me, you, you, you turn into a scruffy old man, you know, yeah. just get your you know, get From out. From there to here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I just, it, it's great that I just have to walk 10 steps to, to the house. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's a good point. So, working from home, we do most of our work from home. Mm. Do you find that family to workshop or house to workshop delineation hard no 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 in fact it's been it's been brilliant for me you know coming from you know traveling all over the highlands to work mm -hmm. and then just being at home you know it's family life as well i can now still, rather than my my wife having to, to to sort the kids out i can do it now and i've got the free time to do it you know Push i'm, I'm, I'm flexible now you know, so um, my wife said, you know, it's it's been a godsend for her, you know, because it was a struggle when I when I'm working all the time and it was, she was part time. But, you know, dealing with the kids, it, it can be hard for just for one person. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad I can I can, you know, do my fair share and um, have a relationship with my kids as well. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah, so. All through pursuing a dream yeah, and making yeah. something right. Yeah. So not only have you looked at building a sustainable business, you've answered all the questions to yourself, could I make that? Yeah. You've fulfilled your own dreams of making it, yeah. but you're also now able to bring up your next generation of family, all through being able to make things. Absolutely, yeah. It's so yeah. good. It's yeah. exciting, yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, I've enjoyed it so much. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I really, yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy now and, and I'm content that I, I, I've gone through the worst of it, but right. I'm, but I'm still, you know, still at the beginning. I'm mm -hmm. still, um, I'm still on my journey. So, but and I, do you make yourself very aware of that that you're still early on in the journey? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's why when people say to me about teaching, I'm not ready for it. Right. I, I, understand. I don't. I don't feel that I have the experience to do that yet. Um. So yeah, yeah. Give, give me a few few years yet. Yeah. How do you take stock of all that? You know, as someone who's just cracking on and, and doing the work, do you set time aside to take stock of all that, to do the, the positive critiques, to do, or do you just kind of work it into your, your day? I just work it in yeah. my you day. Just, it's just what you I do. Don't, I don't plan anything. Yeah. Now, even like my emails, if I know I've got emails to do, sometimes I will put them off, and I might put them off for a week. Yeah. It's just when I feel like, to do them I'm, I'm not very good at um planning myself uh, i just do it when i when i want to do it i know i don't know if that sounds well it's your business yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's about, i always get back to people but sometimes i feel I've, I've done too much too many emails and writing articles i need to make you need to be in the right headspace yeah. that's a requirement for creativity yeah to just do what feels right yes yeah, yeah. um I, I don't have a a plan, a goal. All my, all my goal is to to make, to keep making, and to do as do better than I have done from the previous build. Just keep going. Yeah, that's all I worry about. Um, and all the other, you know, the emails and the other bits and pieces just comes along with it. So yeah. you just have to you deal with it. Yeah, yeah. See, because I think you're. I'm structured like this is the plan. Mm. This needs to happen then. But I, and I don't neither of us gets more done than the other. Mm. Like, it's it's a very 50-50 relationship that we are makers. And I think you're more like that. You're like, I feel like doing this now. Yeah. So you just get on and do that. Yeah. But I don't I think, think there's a right to. or wrong, though. Mm. I, I, you know. I, 
Yeah, I always prioritise the things that I want to do. <laughs> well, it's and I don't, nature, isn't it? No, yeah, and I don't, I don't see a, I don't see a problem with that. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I almost need to prioritise. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I need to prioritise the things I don't want to do because yeah, I would yeah. just do all the things I yeah, wanted I know. to do. You, yeah. you do. Yeah. You have to. You need, you need to. You know, do all the yeah. boring bits. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, but I'm sure I'll get better at it. <laughs> My wife has promised me that she would start to help. <laughs> That's the dream, right? Yeah, that is the dream. Yeah, she she can see that I'm now, I'm I'm doing well. And, um, so you can see the momentum building. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I, my I husband's it, famous. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she she thinks I could go somewhere with this. Yeah, That's sure. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Is and I'm sure she's always been supportive. But has that always been something that was on the cards? Her coming on board with you? Um, her, <laughs> her dream is to uh, to grow vegetables in the garden. Nice. And um, and if she doesn't have to work so much, then I think she'd be happy with that. So as long as she was doing the emails in between the vegetable yeah. growing. In fact, she said to me the other day, she says, what, what other things would you like me to do? I said, well, you can you can pack them all in the boxes. I hate doing that. Yeah. You know, you can uh, get them all sent I'd off. I love that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said, you can do all the things that I don't like to do. Yeah. Nice. So she's up for that. She says, as long as I get paid for it, I said, yeah, I'll do that. Don't worry. <laughs> so it becomes like a, a cool little family business, doesn't it? It, of, it does. Yeah. All from just an interest in autonomy. Yeah, 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 which I never knew could be... It's possible. Could be possible. And so many avenues as well. Different avenues I can go into. Especially uh, in modern day, right? Yeah, There's so many avenues. Exactly. You know, we were we were talking about YouTube there, and it, I know it's a you're in it for the long term with yep. YouTube. You you do a lot of hard work for nothing mm -hmm. to begin with. Uh, I've done a bit of that, and I think I could really push it a lot more. Oh yeah. You know, so that that could be and obviously money from advertising could be another income. Yep. Um, teaching could be a, another income. Mm -hmm. Um. Book maybe could be mm -hmm. a, a, another income. A um, lot of publishers have been reaching out to makers of late for books. Really? Yeah, lots of them. Um, you know, more notably, the Florian Gadsby's just done one. Uh, Rebecca from Struthers Watches has just done one. I think the Penguin Publishers. It's a big publisher, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot of makers. I say a lot, like a lot compared to a few years ago, have been yeah. reaching out and. Makers have been doing it. It's a thing. Yeah. It's absolutely Is a it thing. lucrative? Is it? Must I would need be. to ask the question. Yeah. I could ask yeah. the question yeah. for you though, for sure. It's um, It certainly seemed very good for raising brand awareness. Mm. Certainly very good. And they were definitely getting paid for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's... It's an avenue. Isn't yeah. It is, yeah. Various, th various courses. Have you thought about teaching? I know you know you don't want to teach, but doing like courses in, in a later time. My, my problem is I'm not very good at explaining things sometimes. Mm. Um, that's my. It's in your head, but yeah, like it's, trying it's, to yeah. communicate. Yeah, so again, it's. I actually now prefer emailing because I can think about what I'm saying. Mm. I can take my time and I can say it precisely. Yeah. Um, sometimes my fear is if I was teaching, I wouldn't explain it very well. Um, Although my my, te my sister's a teacher, so I often ask her, you know, how how you would go about it, you know. Yeah. But may maybe one day I could I could do something like that. Would you off the cuff idea? Would you ever do like a flat pack autonoma, like a little like a little put together kit? That's yeah. Because if you do, put me on the list. Like I'm here for yeah. it. <laughs> I've actually. Um, sold some of my licensed some of my designs out to a nice. company so it's just in the beginning at the moment and so i don't quite know they're quite a new company as well so i don't quite know where it's going to go yet but again yeah that's that's something hopefully that, that, that might um spring into something become something you know um even um yeah um, there's a guy called uh rob ives and he makes uh does books with paper automata so you can cut it out and oh, cool. you can put them together and right, that's, right. that's a, an, another uh, kind of way of doing you know making money or something like yeah, that yeah. um there's lots of <laughs> there's lots of things i could do it's just having the time to do yeah. it all of them are full-time jobs yeah, yeah. all like, of them are all of them are full-time jobs and a lot of a lot of preparation work before mm -hmm. you get anything out and uh, i did have an offer as well it was like an uh 
This was from the United Arab Emirates and I had a, um, an events team say, would you like to come out and teach for three days at this expo exhibition? All expenses paid, <laughs> four or five star hotel. Who do you need to take out with you to help you? And I'm like, oh my God. Jack and Kit from Wheel Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, unfortunately, I, I, I couldn't do it. And I just think but that takes a lot of preparation work. You just yeah. can't go out there and do it. It's that not the three thing. days you've been paid for. It's exactly. the months of preparation exactly. to do it. Um, but I was just too busy to do that. Again, it's it's those opportunities that I'd never thought would come along. Yeah, and they're like you'd never think they would even happen. Like, exactly. I, I, I thought it was just me selling stuff and yeah. that, that would be it. I, I say this to our printer came up to meet us for food the other night and I, and I say this to people that contact us about starting magazines I'm like the magazine is not your product yeah the magazine is your flagship product it is not your only yeah. product yeah it's everything so I mean in three minutes there we've talked about a monetized YouTube channel there's social media opportunities mm. there's teaching there's courses there's flat buy there's but they're all income streams exactly all from your personal brand and your craft mm. all from yeah. Really, what I think it all boils down to is all from just doing a really good job at one thing. Yes, yeah, and then just branching off yeah. and using that. Absolutely, yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, I thoroughly enjoyed that conversation. I have really enjoyed this. Yeah. This has been it's been so fascinating <laughs> to find out about you. Thank you. It's been so fascinating. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad. I you know I, I reached out and 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 took your offer. Yeah, I'm you glad know, we again, did. it's it's. Um, it's nice to talk to people, you know, yeah. on the same journey and all that. So yeah. absolutely it's good brilliant. to reflect on yes, it. Yes, yes, yeah. It's a bit of a take stock, isn't it? It's a bit of a... Well, it's, you know, before you, you came up, it was, it's for me as well, going back through my mind, like what the stages of what I've been up to mm. and, and taking stock of how far I've come. And I thought, yeah. Jeez, yeah. Yeah, I've done, I've done, done all right. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've done a bit. That's awesome. Yeah. Well. Is there anything you want to cover that we've not covered or asked about? No, I think that's pretty much it, actually. Yes, yeah. all the kind of conversations that were going on in my head that's before cool. this. So, yeah, I think I've, I've, we've covered everything. Well, I've I thoroughly so enjoyed well. it. I've not got any questions. <laughs> <laughs> Usually we ask the question, mine. what would you yeah. Yeah. tell your younger self? But well, that patience. Would, it would be patience and failure. That They were certainly the two that we discussed. Right. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Oliver, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank it's you for coming up. Thank you no, coming you're up. most welcome. It's... it's uh, I hope it's not the last we see of you. It's no. fantastic. I will be attending no. your uh, autonomous event. Yeah, hopefully one day on your yeah, class yeah, yeah. list for when you start teaching. Yeah. It's brilliant, mate. Yeah. It's brilliant. I'm so made up for you. And I'm so thank you. I'm so happy you were able to give other makers the the real talk of there's a business side of it as well. Yes. Yeah. Because everyone that says that that I think is what really matters to other people yeah. and what other people want to hear. You know what people see of me on social media. You know is maybe a different thing now they've seen actually what i've had to go through to get here um i hope i've been for you know some inspiration to people that are starting so. we need to talk you know. about it and that's yes, what we yeah, try to get yeah. through in these podcasts is oh, tell your story and exactly. tell what you do yeah, but also yeah. the ins and outs and you know yeah and it's not always a, a straightforward of, line you know? yeah exactly it's not always a straightforward line and i hope there's a bit of familiarity that comes with that when other people listen to it because there will be other people being like Oh, they've got loads of followers. They've gained loads of followers. They must be successful. It's How are you doing they, it? They've got this, or they look like they're doing well. But it's like more or less everyone's done the same journey. Yes, yes. To, in some variation. Yeah, and it's just nice to know that you're not alone, and there's there's other people on that yeah. same journey. Yeah. You know, yeah. Mate, thank you so much. Thank, thank really you. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you. Wrap it up at that. <laughs>